Howdy, howdy. Getting thin on top. Uh oh. We'll give everybody a few minutes here to join in, and then we'll get started. Get these things adjusted up. Hopefully, none of my videos are sideways. I apologize. And I'm always working on improving. Always working on improving. And just trying to get this information out there, guys. Um, I have a lot of fun with what I do. And what I've learned has changed my life. Because the training I do provides me with enjoyment. It's it's just different. It's really fun. Hopefully we'll get some good questions today because we're going to be going over Accuracy 101. This is something that takes little to no more time to do. But it just gets amazing results. Hope everybody is safe and home enjoying family. All right, guys, and if you have any questions, feel free to jump on Wild Willie's Way YouTube channel. And you can ask me live questions here, and I'll answer them later. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to go over some things. Sometimes, because of getting electrocuted, I can go off subject a little bit. If I do, just hold on, because it will make sense. Everything I do goes together. So if I do run off into a different area ever, which I'm known to do, okay, so that it'll just be a point that'll help you to understand what I'm telling you understand it better okay all right now what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna tell you a secret that I've been using for years now I've been also teaching my buddies and my friends this for many years I've been giving it away for probably the last three years just to help people um and everything i do i everything i do i have i have tested it worked with my friends developed it hundreds of times to make sure it works everything and all my 101s they are want marrying want marrying is the foundation to get the dog to do what you want him to do is essential to get him to perform consistently at long range. This is how we win world hunts. Accuracy, everything, stay put, running a track, all this stuff goes hand in hand. I just happen to understand it differently than anybody I've ever met. Um, I had to study brain science so that way I could heal my own seizures. This information allowed me to understand how dogs, especially hunting dogs, use hormones to process hormones okay they use hormones to process hormones for everything they do they're complete hormonal creatures this is why thyroid issues can cause so much problems in accuracy um, if they don't have the hormones to process the track they're in a same mental state as a buck in buck fever and that's exactly how it works. If you're getting ready to get a shot on that buck because he's standing right by a, a doe and they're in rut, we'll get a smile on our face because he's not thinking. This is what happens with our hunting dogs when they're overheated, in too much adrenaline. Um, 
or if they're just ready to tree. If they're that excited, that can switch it over to where they just lock it down. Now here's the difference. If our dog's thinking, while the other dog's treeing, our dog comes up with the meat. That's the key, okay? Now, how do we do all this stuff? How do we get this stuff? Well, first, I always make a foundation for everything I do, okay? To where the dog wants to do what I want to do too. Now, usually this is gonna use reverse psychology or reverse hunger to get it first, okay? Or, in some cases, just different communication to where the dog understands. And that's all we do in this one. We're just gonna communicate differently with the dog. So that way they understand what it is we want in the first place. This is crucial, okay? Um, well, it's so important. Last year, I lost count, but I saved the lives of 25 to 30 hounds. And I know it was way more than that. It's probably closer to double that, but I quit keeping track at 25. Um, but I saved their lives by providing their owner with a 15 to 20 minute conversation of information to where they just change the things they do in the woods while they're doing them anyways, to where the dog understands it. Uh, Ron Jackson's hook dog. Um, the list just goes on and on and on of dogs that were maybe one or two out of 10 accurate. These dogs, if you're one out of 10 accurate, this goes on for not real long, and these dogs are gonna get traded or worse yet. If we're feeding them, they, they need, let me fix my connection here, they, they need to please us. And we can't keep walking to blank trees, especially if you're disabled. Okay guys, I'm having a problem here with my connection on YouTube, so we'll just have to dub this video and stick it over on there. I apologize. Um, and I am new to this, I am always learning. Everything I do, I'm always learning. Everything I do, I'm always testing, okay? Um, and that's the key, that's the key to learning. Acquire information during the process of what we're trying to teach. This gives us the information that lets us get amazing results. If we're training any dog anything, we need to be gathering information, and that's the key to what I do. Everything I do, start and finish, and every single thing I do is simply a training method that includes a test so I can get information of how that dog acts inside. These dogs are all individuals. Now, one-on-ones work on all dogs because they're just, they're just reverse psychology that works with all canines, okay? And everything I do works for all other hunt dog breeds. So my training system allows me to train bird dogs like other people do in months. The last bird dog I trained, I trained full obedience. So trained her to load, sit down, lay down, up, sit, stand up, come, stay, load, unload on a command, and point birds, and hold woe, and woe on command in four days. On the fifth day, she got her service dog certificate and flew to Panama. The way I train these dogs is unbelievably different. It equates to speed training because I'm using so many different things all at once that dogs understand, it, 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 including body language, dog body language, canine body language is included in how I train dogs. So everything is different. Uh, I didn't know that they didn't know this all over. I couldn't read well. But um, no, with the 101s, they don't hardly take any time. They just maximize our time spent with the dog in the woods so we get a different understanding of that dog and he gets an understanding of what we want. Now, Accuracy 101 is awesome, but it's not near as awesome as off-game breaking. Um, that's my most prized creation, okay? 
But this little thing here, uh, you might even think I'm stupid, but when you try it, when you actually try it, you'll see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run you through a scenario of what I used to do and what I changed now. Okay, This is so huge with dogs because they understand what's going on. All right, If they understand what's going on and have anyone to please at all, the result will come. Many of those dogs that I saved are Grand Knights and Knight Champions now. They didn't need anything else. This is all they needed. And, you know, they're nine, eight, nine coon out of ten on, on our trees for the rest of their life. Okay? Many dogs, and especially in hounds, are so intelligent, they're just happy to do what they think we want. Okay? This can create all sorts of problems, all right? The way we all train our dogs in the woods, when we're hunting them when they're young, we all make a huge mistake. Every person I've ever met does this. Every person I've ever hunted does this. We make this error. I used to do it every time I was at a tree. Every young dog, I did it wrong. Every person I've told, even the ones that say, I don't do it like that, they'll call me later and say, I did. I just didn't realize it. Well, we have to understand our dogs think simpler. It's common sense, guys. That's why this works. If it doesn't make common sense, throw it out. Your dog won't understand it. That's how it works. If somebody's telling you something and it makes simple, pure common sense, it's like, duh, it'll work. If they tell you something and you got to reason it and this and that and all that, Learn, always learn, always, always learn. Never stop learning. But if it doesn't make sense, either figure it out in your own mind if it makes sense or don't use it. Because if you can't make sense out of it, the dog can't make sense out of it. It's that easy, okay? So everything that I tell you guys, I have tested thousands of times. I've got the result with not just one dog. 101s work on all dogs. Okay, if it's of normal intelligence and has any hunting blood in it at all, it works. And then these things do relate to all other hunting dog sports. But coon hounds are smarter, and it's way easier to get these results on coon hounds. By far, they have more level, a higher level of want to please, and with that higher level of want to please. That's just another thing that lets us get the result way faster. Some of our coon hounds learn instantly. They see another dog do it, and they do it for the rest of their life. This can be problematic as well, okay? This is why the 101s are so important. The 101s gets the dog to do what we want it to do. Now, with accuracy 101, okay, this little scenario is going to get you guys more coon treed all right now i'm going to take you through this what i used to do okay then i'm going to take you through how i changed it and it's that easy anybody who tries this will see a difference in their dog and it's going to make complete common sense all right here we go now when i was hunting a young dog this is what i used to do i used to go and i go take the young dog and i take my gun young dog goes in Tree's a coon. Okay? I got the gun. I go in there. I'm going to tell him something. Good boy, coon got it. I touch mine. But I do it in a controlled manner when they're pups. So that way I can touch them and I don't cause any problems. So I just overdo everything so that way I have no problems with anything. Okay? So I give mine multiple verbal praise points. Good boy, coon got it. I might touch all four corners. Getting used to other dogs coming in and bumping him. Now he knows he's right because I shoot it out. Boom. I harvest the coon. He's got it in his mouth, he knows I'm right. Young dog knew he was right. I'm happy, he's happy, we leave. Now we go to the next tree and it's slick. Same young dog, slick tree. No coon bean pole, absolutely nothing there. So what do we do? Well, we gotta let him know he's wrong. So I say, can't get it, can't get it, and I'll slack and jerk the collar because he's wanting to go back. So I'm dragging him to get him to walk with me. Can't get it, come on. The harder he pulls and fights to go back, the harder I'm going to drag him and correct him. Can't get it, it's not there, let's go. Dead tree. And I'm going to slack and jerk and pull him and get him to walk with me. Then I'm going to take him a little ways away and I'm going to cut him. Now hopefully he'll rework that out and tree that. 
and he'll get that. But in either case, the first tree he knew he was right. He got the coon in his mouth. The second tree he knew he was wrong. He got scolded. Okay, here's where the inaccuracy problem that we grow, we breed in our dogs, we grow in our dogs, comes in. Now, more often than not, we go to the woods without the gun. Okay, either way. We forget it sometimes, and our young dogs need the tree for us. Not because they're getting a coon or they're not going to stay put in the hunts. Most people don't understand that coon hunting is not about just harvesting things. It's about watching the dog develop. It's about watching him tree coon. Most people and hunters know if you kill the coon, you can never tree it again. So most of us understand that we can't kill every coon. We don't want to kill every coon. It's not anything what hunting's about. Hunting's about the dogs, the tracks, the hair standing up on the back of your neck when that young dog starts smoking. Okay? This motivates us to walk thousands of miles in the woods. And if we get there and it's never there, <laughs> it ain't good. It ain't good for us. Why go? It ain't good for them. Now, we're going to change this by one thing. Here we go. I always like to lead to it because it's so easy. All right. Young dog went in, treed coon. Got it. In his mouth. He knows he's right. Young dog goes in, gets a slick. Okay. We scold him. He knows he's wrong. Now young dog goes in and we don't have the gun and he trees it. Here's where the problem comes in. Utter confusion. If we go into the tree that the dog has and we don't have the gun, 90% of us are gonna spend more time praising the dog to let him know he's right. So we're gonna tell him verbally, good boy, you got it. Coon got it. We're gonna praise him up more, letting him know. Here's what's happening. We're amping him up. He's treeing hard, but we ain't got the gun. We're not gonna take it out, so we go to leave. Human beings are creatures of habit. So. I've never met anybody that doesn't do this. As soon as we go to leave that tree, that we praise that dog up and he's training harder on now, we leave the tree and we do the same training we did on the slick tree. As soon as he wants to go back, we slack and jerk, say whatever words we always did, and I say, can't get it, come on. Can't get it, come on. And I'm scolding that dog because I want him to heal with me. But he doesn't understand that. Always know this with dogs. If you want a dog to sit, say sit. If you want a dog to lay, say lay. But if you say sit lay, sit lay, the dog will look at you like, what do you want? That's what's happening at all our trees. Okay? This improves young dogs, old dogs, any dogs, because they understand it this way. So this is what I do. I change one thing. I'll take you back through it again. It's this easy. Okay? Here's what I do. My young dog goes in. Tree's a coon, and I got the gun, and I'm going to harvest it because season's in. I'm going to tell him, good boy, coon got it, coon got it. I also say the meat, that'll come, okay? Coon got it, you got it. Then I harvest it to him. He knows he's right, it's in his mouth. I always let them lull over it for a little bit as this is a big reward in a dog's mind, okay? Now we leave. Same young dog goes in and gets a slick. Can't get it, come on. Cut it like I always did. Don't change nothing. Scold him, get him off the tree, cut him, hopefully he finds it. Now here's what I changed. My young dog goes in. Trees. I don't have a gun, which is what I do, what we do more often than not. I'm just going to change one thing. I'm going to praise him up more. I'm going to let him know that it's there. Good boy coon got it. I'm going to praise him up more because I'm not harvesting the coon. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to scold him for wanting to go back to the tree when I leave. That's it. So all I'm going to do is, is keep saying, good boy, coon got it. Good boy, coon got it. You got it, boy. You got the meat. While I drag him away from the tree, while he's pulling, while he's wanting to go back, I don't care if he knocks me down and I'm disabled without a knee. I don't care if he drags me back to the tree. I'm not going to scold a young dog for leaving the tree with the meat until we get 30, 40 yards away. Then I'm going to hook him up and let him calm down. And from that point, after he's calmed down, then I'm going to tell him, Heal or walk. And then I'm going to scold him from healing or walking. Keeping the tree and healing away from it separate in his mind. This is huge. This will improve the accuracy on any dog. 
I've never met a person that doesn't do this. We're creatures of habits. I used to do it every time. I changed it up. Now I save dogs' lives with this. Now we win competition hunts with this. And know this, I take it a hundred times farther, okay? But simply, I'm just doing communication that my dog understands. He always knows if he's right. He always knows if he's wrong. He always knows if I'm happy. He always knows if I'm disappointed. He always simply knows every time. And all I've done was, is quit disciplining him from leaving the trees that the coon was in it, that I praised him up more. Just 20, 30 yards or however far it is for the dog to calm down. This always keeps it clear in his mind. This will take any dog, any dog to a different accuracy level because accuracy, true accuracy that wins hunt is about consistency, okay? If we consistently let our dogs know if they're right or wrong, it makes no difference if they don't understand what we're saying, none. But if they understand exactly what we want, over just a little bit of time, you will see accuracy improve, 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 improve to a point you probably don't need any more. If your dog has a high level of want to please, it'll come together. Now, that's accuracy 101. It's that easy. It takes no more time in the woods. It just takes a little bit more patience so the dog can understand. And it will get results. I've been using this for, oh, 15, 17 years or more. Now, I also do something else which I'd like to touch on today, okay? I do razor's edge accuracy. Now, I break a rule, one of the biggest rules that have stopped people from doing the things I do. But know this, I understand dogs differently. So I know I can break different rules and not have problems with them. And in the book, it's all written in. So it took longer in that book to make sure that we weren't causing any problem with any dog than it was just to get the results. Because if we train a dog and we've always got to train the dog, it's worthless. If we train a dog and we got to refresh and up the training all the time, it's worthless to me, okay? So my training becomes a dog. So that's why he always performs that way. This is consistency. This is what wins, hunts, and impresses friends. The most accurate dog in the world just does three things. He tells you it's there and he stays. But the dog that wins that night does it more consistently than all the rest. And if we're just talking the dog, not the handler, because I got a lot to learn in handling again, guys. It's been a long time, but that's what I'm doing. I'm doing everything I can so I can get back in the woods and competition hunt. Okay, now with this razor's edge, this is why I have guys winning world hunts and dominate hunts in their area and we're just getting started with this this is something that i kept a secret for many years so that way i could show off now razor's edge accuracy i discovered with my own dog brussel he was amazingly accurate if he treat i tell handlers if he trees on a telephone pole Make sure you take your 10 minutes because the coon will be on the wire. If he trees, it's there. Many, many time handlers, when I couldn't walk and need a handler, they'd go check his tree while I'm on the way to the woods because I couldn't walk like them. That's why I need a handler. By the time I'm halfway to the tree, I see they're like leaving the tree. But I always told him, never take my dog off the tree. He's trained. He won't come off the tree anyways. But I did this. That way they would have to walk back. I had many years experience of this and I realized that nobody that I knew and hunted with even believed the accuracy level I was getting. So my handlers, and they, they know who they are, would leave his trees. They'd go, they'd check them and they'd leave. They'd tell me, it's not there, Willie. We didn't have cell phones and stuff like this, so it was a walk. Now if you're 360 pounds, you ain't walking like other people. So simply, I just stay there. I just stay there and wait. And eventually they'd come back looking, hey, is he having a seizure? Can he walk? No, I'm just waiting. Because the proof's in the pudding. If you don't show people on every tree that that coon is in it, they can't believe it themselves. Most people cannot believe this level of accuracy is even possible. But it's all about adrenaline control, okay? 
Everything I do with dogs, child safety, everything is about adrenaline control. Adrenaline control gets my dog thinking while other dogs are treeing. This is the same as every single professional athlete. I learned this in martial arts when I was a kid. The best way to lose a fight is to get angry. You can't think. So that's what I'm doing with my hunting dogs. I'm teaching them to think in a different adrenaline state of mind so they can think clear. This simply allows them to process hormones so they can treat more coon and other dogs are doing doesn't bother them. It's the same thing as a dog that's naturally split tree. But if my dog, has, if I got a dog that's been hunted with other dogs its whole life, well, literally I can bring that back out in it really quickly with Razor's Edge. This is what Razor's Edge does, okay? Now, I've seen Russell, and I would work him on a tree line, so I saw what he's doing. But if he treed, it was there, period. Okay, My last handler at Blue Tick Days, I told him on Friday night, it's like, what dog should have won, Russell? I said, why didn't he win? I didn't call him treed. I said, has that dog ever left a tree in his life that he's located on? No. Ever won? No. I said, has the coon ever not been there? And any one tree you've ever seen him tree in his entire life that you've seen him hunt? He said, no. I said, I'm telling you right now, if my dog locates and you do not call him treed, you'll never handle him again. That's it. If he makes a mistake, he makes a mistake. That's fine. But we ain't going to keep losing mistakes because we don't trust him. Now, that ain't fair to him. The next night, he simply called him every time he located. And we simply won. This is begotten at a different dimension of accuracy okay now one i teach my dogs winding ability or scent belief with a scent box right in my backyard i never scare my pups of a coon but i get a fear strike from scent in my backyard with a scent box this fills a scent layer dogs have the ability to smell seven scents at the same time they can get sprayed in the mouth by a skunk and if they do don't withdraw that dog has the ability to track and treat a coon now immediately. They can completely separate those scents at the same time and track another one, okay? Now, scent layering is filling up one of those layers so they always smell it. They're always aware for it. This is how wild canine predators hunt. When we're looking at coyotes out in the field to run them with our dogs, them coyotes ain't out there sleeping sun on themselves. They're hunting while they're asleep. That's scent layering. Okay, canine predators have to use this. It's kind of like a vet. Like my dad's never asleep. He's always awake. No matter, no matter if he hears a, a, a toe step, he's alert. This is the same thing as scent layering in dogs. If they smell it, they wake up and go hunt. They're opportunistic. They have to survive this way or they would not be able to feed themselves. So the scent box makes one of these layers permanent. If we take the scent box farther, we can train any dog to rig in just a, in a, in a matter of a week or two, okay? Rigging is scent belief or scent aggression. So the scent box allows a hound to believe its nose just like it does its eyes. And it raises the scent aggression. This is accuracy and this is track depth. This is winding ability too, okay? Now from that scent box, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. I use a tree line and a rope bag in wind direction. Now, I'm going to set this up because I break a rule. We have an old rule in coon hunting that when your dog can tree a coon, you never show it a coon again. This is false. Absolutely false. It does have merit in many things, okay? When our young dog can treat a coon, we should not show it one again until it's a coon hound. So it learns the game. But after my dogs are night champion quality and they know the game, I get another one out. And I take them through razor's edge accuracy. They already know the game. It's already set in their muscle memory. You will not hurt a thing and you can trim your dog off into an amazingly different accurate dog with experience. Because a seasoned dog is simply a dog that's thinking in an adrenaline. 
Everything that I do with my young dogs, everything I do, seasons them so they can think in adrenaline too. So now I've got all the energy, but I've got a level mind that's processing hormones faster than other dogs. This is the underlying device that every dog winning world hunts has. He's a thinking while the other dogs are treeing. This is what makes world champions. Simply, the, the, if you take any problem a dog has, you take it down to its simplest answer, there's your cure. It's always just the simplest thing because dogs think simple, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do with this setup is I'm gonna use the tree line so that way my dog can be off leash and he can stay in it and I can train him in it. But he'll know it's he'll know it's there, so he'll stay in it. And what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna use this setup to teach my dog to do what a good squirrel dog does. A good squirrel dog trees a squirrel. He checks, he makes sure it's there. If he's a legend, he's going to smell for the body. But as he's treeing it, that squirrel leaves, it goes to the next tree. He simply watches it, and then he goes to the tree with it. And if it moves to another tree, he goes to the next tree. And a good squirrel dog is always under the meat. I simply train my hounds to do the same thing a squirrel dog does with its eyes, with their nose. So I simply train my dogs not to locate where the scent went up, but to take it another step farther. To circle the tree on their hind legs and find the body of the coon before they ever locate in the first place. Now we've got a whole different level of hound. Because my hound isn't even going to locate till he knows it's there. And if he believes it's there with his nose, it's no different than him looking at it hanging off the side of the tree. He'll never leave! So I get an unmatched level of accuracy and an unmatched level of stay put through scent belief. I have trained Cocker Spaniels to do this. It takes the average human being 250,000 molecules per scent per square inch to identify scent. It takes the average dog of all breeds six. Six molecules per square inch. Every single one of our hounds is capable of doing this if they're of average intelligence. It's just they never go through things wild predators would to develop these things naturally. Puppies learn this before they're six months old. And I am not man making anything. I am literally just setting up different scenarios that wild canine predators go through to provide them with survival of the fittest, with that edge that they need. And I'm just recreating these things and mimicking them with my hounds that never go through them because they're domesticated, so they never go through these things. Now, I'll be writing about that, and we'll get Razor's Edge up so that way anybody who wants to can. But no, it is amazing. But it would not work without the foundation. Accuracy 101 gets, it want marries. It marries the want of accuracy with our dogs that we have to have. Okay, but it does this inside their mind, so they want to do the same thing. That's the key. Everything I do with the dog starts out let sit down, lay down, upset, um, find it, which is tracking. That's my verbal command for tracking. Every time I cut my dog, I say find it because eventually I ain't going to use a leash, I'm going to use verbal control for everything. Yes, I talk to my dogs more because I don't need to do anything else. A buddy of mine, Stephen Godby, which you're going to be seeing videos of his boy, he just told me the other day, this dog understands every word I'm saying. And I told him, you've hit the twilight zone. You've entered what I preach about. These hounds are astronomically intelligent. When we work with them instead of against them, they can do and do do things that blow your mind. You just can't believe it. When you've been hunting your dogs your whole life and now you don't need a leash, you just say find it, you just say come, whether they're treeing a coon, whether whether they're running the track. Now, and there's rules to these things, okay? We don't just do them with young dogs. We wait till things are set in. But literally, when you have this dimension of a hound, it's like an animalistic extension. You say it, the dog does it. 
Hounds can learn this stuff faster than any other dogs I've ever trained. I trained one black and tan. Full obedience. And this is real. I can't even hard to believe it. I don't even really want to say it. But pre-train the easy and drop trains dogs to train. That's it. Those three steps train a dog to train in a different dimension. Go through them slow. Go through them thoroughly. Go back through them later. Bring it into the woods on drop. When you harvest a coon, you have a different dog. One that if you say it, it does it. Okay? If you're having issues with that, go back over it again. You just didn't put a little bit enough time into it. These and hounds, they will go through pre-trained easy and drop successfully in three, four days, most of them. It's just do it and they're on to the next or on to the next. In that case, go back and put it in a little bit more. But essentially, when you're done, your dog won't even eat his food if you tell him not to. Your dog will stop a kill if you tell him not to. Your dog will stop doing whatever you want when you tell him to. You can tell him no. You can tell him yes. When he's in adrenaline, and he will respect it. This is altogether different training that the world is 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 going to utilize because coon hunters helped me figure this out. This would have been impossible to figure out without owning hunting dogs, without working with dogs in adrenaline mode. All these things, everything I do, is simply adrenaline training. We're either teaching a dog to control the adrenaline or training the dog and talking with the dog when he's in the mode to learn. Think about it like this. The way to be a better trainer is always to use more patience. If you discipline when you're angry, you're defeating your own purpose. Okay? And I'm not saying don't discipline. Some situations we have to discipline. My dog is not allowed to do certain things, period. Okay? But at the same time, I need to think. So if I just discipline out of anger, I'm losing the most special part about myself, and that is thought. Why did he do it? How did he do it? So if I'm angry, I think first. Stop the situation from happening. Think first. Patience is whispering, period. But it's hard to have patience if we don't know. Fear of unknowing causes anger, which causes us to train our dogs the wrong way. Okay? If we use just a little bit more patience and think about it a little bit, pull that dog back, give it some thought, right? Cool down ourselves a little bit. Literally, we can come up with a little plan. Let him back off, let him do it again, and correct him correctly to where he understands it. I hope that makes sense, guys, but it's huge. Patience in the moment is no difference than professional training. And that's the key. You don't have to worry about it. It's not the end of the world. We can effectively change anything a dog does. Just because they do it right in front of us doesn't mean that that's the end of the world. And everybody I teach hits this. We hit this factor to where we're not afraid. When you hit that, you can train dogs to do anything you want. And everything I do betters dogs, but specifically coon dogs. Now, we're going to give you something else here with accuracy. Give me one more second. Now, when I was talking about off-game breaking last week, I mentioned something, and I say I use it in everything I do. Okay, it's the rhyme and rhythm of how dogs learn, and this is how it is. If we want to train the dog anything, break it, anything, we want to set the dog up for failure, or we want to induce the bad thing, the thing fault we don't want to happen first, and then finish that day with what we do want. So, when it comes to accuracy 101, here's the key. We use our same method every time. If we don't have the gun, we don't discipline the dog to walk with us off the tree. It's that simple. Now we add this. We simply put him in the dry holes or where he's more apt to get a slick tree first. Scold for it. Cut him off. Let him work it. And then at the end of the night, put him in our hunting hole and get him under a coon. If you use this in combination, 
to where you don't discipline leaving the tree when you're not giving him a coon, okay? Just praise him up and tell him coon got it while you're walking away from the tree. Good boy, coon got it, whether he's dragging or not. Hook him up to the tree, let him calm down, then tell him to walk and get away from it, okay? Then make him mind. He'll always know he's right. Now, what we want to do is, is we want to put him in our hardest areas first, where he's more apt to get a slick tree. Best case scenario is he gets slicked, you recut him, he finds it, and he gets under that meat. You get in there, you, he gets one where you don't shoot it down, you do that exact same thing where you're praising him up leaving the tree, then get him to walk, and then get him under a straight, normal coon after he's got on a slick. In that combination, and with that understanding, your dogs will treat way more coon. And it's that easy, way more coon. And then after you get it that far, then you can take it to a whole unimaginable level of accuracy. And that level of accuracy is where me and my guys live. That's what we expect. I. I absolutely, my hound better never be just backing another dog. I want to hear silence so that way I know he's picking it out. If for any reason the winning conditions aren't there and they can't do it, they're only going to revert back to what they did before. So you never lose any accuracy ever. Your dog's always under the right tree, never under the canopy. And you only gain magnificent magnificent accuracy this is exactly razor's edge accuracy is exactly what every legend that's tree and coon today that no other dogs can find or smell is what they're doing and that's why i studied it i had to know why how is this dog tree every single time he's got to meet why do so many people believe it's not possible but i'm seeing it with my own eyes so i studied it and that's what they do most dogs simply Run a track to the tree. They'll get down. I'm talking granites, just about all of them. They'll get down. They check it. The very next tree that that scent touches, they tree on it automatically. It's like an automatic response. Your extremely accurate dogs will check three or four trees and then go back to the last one and check it. Amazingly accurate dogs will circle. And they'll run a circle, and then they'll run a bigger circle around there. These, All these things, guys, is why dogs are quiet right before they tree. This is what they're doing. Just different dogs are doing different levels of this stuff, okay? But your legendary accuracy dogs literally circle, get up on their hind legs, and pinpoint out of the wind. They circle, pinpoint. Now, these dogs that are doing this naturally are the dogs that are coming off when they winded one, and they're treeing, and the coon's a tree over. Don't scold. Don't discipline. Take them around that tree and let them keep winding it. Bring them in a tighter circle to that tree. This literally lets them know what tree it was in. Just because they're smelling it and the wind's blowing and they're on the right, wrong tree doesn't mean they should be scolded. They should be rewarded and allotted the time to find it. Pull them off and recut them. Treat it like a slick. Let them work that wind in accuracy until they're under that right tree every single time they try to wind one. Wind one. Because that's only going to equate to razor's edge accuracy. It's the same thing. It's just I know how to set this up and get the same result. And most people literally don't want to see it because we don't want our dog off a, a tree over because it costs us minus. Well, rather than be scared of it, embrace it. Take it all the way so that way your dog's always under the meat. Them dogs that are legendary accurate are also legendary stay put. This is simply because they know it's there. They believe their nose. This generally takes years of hunting, years. This is why most dogs don't win in big hunts until they're between five and seven years old. It's the experience factor. The difference is, is I know how to control the setup to experience a young dog in the same thing it takes years for an older dog to do, okay? Chuck Henson at that Winter Classic, Brett, they know exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to trim these dogs off. We're going to be setting up razor's edge here, guys, so that way my guys can come. We're going to be doing it here. We're going to be teaching it here as soon as this corona stuff is over. Until then, stay safe. Have fun. These techniques will get you results. I never waste a man's time because 
it always, always comes out at the dog. If we give bad advice, only the dog suffers. If we get good advice and the dog's doing better, we appreciate that dog more. It gets taken care of better. It's got better value in it. This is what we have to have. Money's tight, and if we're gonna feed it, it needs to perform for us. These things will get your dog to perform at different levels. The 101s that I start get, will improve everything that you have ever had on any dog, I guarantee it, and that's where I start. But guys, let's have fun with it, okay? So, this is how I do, all right? This is how I do Accuracy 101. I prepare myself, literally. I know I'm gonna to have to use patience because my young dog, my old dog, if he's older, it's gonna be worse, is gonna be dragging me to get back to that tree. But the crucial thing is, is he doesn't understand. They're like toddlers. Their mind is in a different state. So when I praise my dog up because I'm not gonna harvest a coon, this is what I do. I praise him up more. I use multiple verbal and multiple physical praise points, okay? So I tell my dog, good boy, coon got it. Good boy, coon got it. That's my, you got it, okay? I praise him up and I touch him. Good boy, you got it. I praise to his temperament, so I'm not causing a problem, but I let him know I am happy with him. That's all he needs to know, okay? I'm gonna make sure I say the same words I always do. So I always say coon got it if they got it. I always say can't get it if they don't have it. This way I'm always setting up a word that the dog understands. Now, I use two close words because coon hounds are smarter. You should never train a dog the same words and syllables and it should be one, okay? So it should be coon and no, or something like that. However, I push everything. So with coon hounds, all right, I say coon got it and I use a very similar word of can't get it for when it's not there. Because every coon hound I've ever trained can understand this and it pushes their intelligence to understand us more. So everything I do pushes, I use two word commands, sit down, lay down so I can say up, sit. Coon hounds can absorb all this stuff instantly. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna go hit my dry hole first where there's hardly no coon, okay? I'm gonna get him in there and get him under slick, all right? Can't get it, I'm gonna drag him off that tree. Can't get it, I'm gonna recut him, hopefully he gets it. If not, we're gonna go hunt him another place. I'm always going to, if he gets a slick, we're going to another woods. This is imperative. You will find near to no improvement unless you get them under what you want that night, okay? Those are the nights that they're learning the most. When they're ending on what you want and they're being praised for it, and we end that session, okay? So we dry hole him, we get him in there, he gets slicked, hopefully. I want him to get slicked so I can teach him. I don't want a coon every time. If they never do it, you can't teach them not to. So I'm gonna induce him to get slick. Then we're gonna get out here and I'm going to, I'm not gonna whip him, I'm not gonna switch him, I'm gonna do what I call dry pinch. I'm gonna slack and jerk and tell him, come on, can't get it. I'm not gonna say heel, because I don't want him to walk with me, I want him to know he was wrong. Can't get it, can't get it. And I'm gonna drag him away all the way from the tree and keep dragging him, take him far away and cut him. I'm gonna make sure to go around that same 30 yards. So that way if I'm cutting him under that 30 yards, he knows to go find it. When we go the 30, 40 yards, he knows it's time to walk, okay? Consistency gets everything. Stay consistent with this. They'll understand. They learn over time. Now we've got that slick tree, okay? I ain't got a gun. I know I got to use patience. The next coon he gets under, I'm going to praise him up and I'm going to praise him up good, but to his temperament. Good boy, coon got it. Using the same words I always do so he knows that's what I want. Good boy, coon got it. And I'm going to praise him up. Now he's treeing harder. He's blowing that tree down just like I like. I am surely never going to discipline my dog for doing what I want. I don't want my dog to leave trees either. So this also, in your young dogs and older dogs, improves stay put. Absolutely. If it isn't working several things at a time, then why do it? It needs to 
get multiple results all at the same time. So it does. And this is why it gets so exciting, guys. So literally, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to grab that dog. I've just prayed him up. He's extra jacking. And I'm going to put up with it. I'm going to use my patience. He's going to pull. I'm going to say, good boy, Coon got it. Now I'm going to drag him off of there. He's going to pull back. And if I fall over in the mud, I'm going to say, good boy, Coon got it. And I am going to take him 30, 40 yards away and hook him up. Let him calm down. I'm going to tell him, good boy, Coon got it. You got it. Good boy. And then I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to use my ignore dog technique. And I'm just going to ignore him. Not going to look at him. Just let him set, settle down and let him know it's over. He's hooked to a tree. Then when he himself calms down, he himself knows it's over, the training is done. Now it's set in. He knew he had that coon and he wanted to go back to it. And he knew he was happy. Now we let him calm down and now we say, heal, is what I say. I slack and jerk or put my pinch chain on and heal out. We heal out of that woods. My dog always knew he was right and he always knew when it was time to walk. Now, I'm not going to do this forever. I'm just going to do this until he's accurate. When he's accurate, he can walk with me. I won't even need a leash. By that time, I won't even need a leash. He'll know it's done. He'll know it's over because he's seasoned at a young age. Then you get the best of both worlds. Now, this is what I do with each and every one of my young dogs as a foundation. However, every single dog that I hunt, I do this. We breathe it. It takes no more time. Any dog understands, and it will improve the accuracy. I have improved the accuracy with a 25-minute conversation over the phone in thousands of dogs from the ages of 11 years old that were just missing winning hunts to be grands or night champions, night champions or grands, or slick tree and idiots of all ages. It simply works because they understand what we want. If we're disciplined, when a dog's doing something that we want, they don't always understand that it's just this part that we don't want them to do. Matter of fact, they almost never understand because they're in adrenaline mode. When animals are in adrenaline mode, even people, if two kids get in a fight at school, they're not learning nothing that entire day. So what I do is, is I just separate this confusion. And I bring it into the woods so that way my dog clearly understands. And then with this, you can always tell the intelligence of your dog. Because as soon as you do it with one dog, the next dog you do it with, you'll absolutely know how smart are they. How are they responding? It allows us to look into it. And that's the key with the 101s. Information. Gather information. That's the key to breeding. Gather information. If we correct the fault on a dog and it takes us five months, and now that dog's really good, was it bred in or, or was it man-made? Well, we won't know until we breed it and take a guess. That's not how I do things. Breeding is always a guesswork. Greg Herring taught me the colors and shades of breeding, which made way more sense to me than anybody else who's tried to explain it. But then it let me know I've been looking at these colors and shades all my life because I test train. So let's say I've got a dog that jacks the tree. Well, literally in breaking it, I can tell if it was bred in or not. This allows me to know if I breed that dog, what's he gonna throw? Because many dogs jack the tree just because they got a high level of scent aggression and they have a higher level of want. This could be bred in or it could be just an individual dog. So everything I do has 30 different reasons. It allows us to see what it is we have on the inside of the dog. This saves time, amazing amounts of time. This method allows us to get results in minutes versus months. This, these methods allow us to train with a dog's mind, not just by hundreds and thousands of repetitions. It's altogether different. What we do is, is we do it to where we use Want marrying, and then we yin and yang it with a little discipline so that way the dog does what we want, whether he's right beside us or he's two miles away every single time. And it all, every single thing I do starts with want marrying. That's what 101s are. They're no discipline. They're just simply when we talk to the dog, when we ignore the dog, so that way we're leaving the dog doing in his mind 
what we want him to do, what we want him to do better, and then we end on it. So literally, after my dog gets under that coon, I end that night praising him up for it. It's more important to end that night if a dog is slick treed. It's more important to end that night on that coon under the tree right there and then than it is to get three more coon on the outside. Because if you don't get them, he's not learning. What they soak on, what they go home and take in on that night, that's what they do better the next day. And that's how it works. Dry hole first, get them in your honey hole after, okay? If you've got a severe slick tree and dog, get them in a dry hole, bring them back and put them on a control tree to where they can successfully track and tree it and be praised for it, put them up. And holy mackerel, you will see your dog's accuracy raise astronomically simply because this is how they understand in their minds. Guys, I hope you guys enjoy this information. Um, it works. It works amazingly well. And I honestly don't know how many dogs now are titled because of it. Um, I studied Brussels in 2004 or 2003. Somewhere in there, he was that accurate. Now, what I hadn't realized was, is, yes, he was pretty natural accurate. But my inability to hunt deep in the woods allowed me to use a tree line, okay? He was learning razor's edge accuracy when I started him. I just didn't know it. So when I went back and studied him, I just realized that I'd already trained it in him by using a tree line because I was limited in the distance I could walk. So using a tree line, it allowed me to do several things. It allowed me to control my training environment so my dog can be off the leash and I'm still training him. He's not going to leave that area, okay? These setups are crucial and I've been doing them for years. They can take a little bit more work but they get amazing results. Otherwise, I wouldn't do them. Um, have fun with it. And remember, control your anger. You'll have a better dog. We mostly discipline our dogs when we're upset. This is all human beings. It's called misplaced aggression. As a matter of fact, misplaced aggression is the cause of every single problem anybody's hound is having. Dogs form social relationships by aggression over food. This is how they talk. Depending on environmental conditions, depending on how much food there is. The hunger they are, the more they'll fight over food. Okay? So all relationships with dogs, either even if they're shy or aggressive or none of the above, they're still using micro body language and using these postures to talk to other dogs. That's what I do. I use food as reverse hunger to train these dogs anything I want because they remember what feeds their stomach. They talk by aggression. That's the only reason they care to remember. So what we do with our obedience stuff is, is we use some lean meat treats. It's a pay treat in the backyard to get a different level of adrenaline control and safety on our dogs. When we achieve this, everything else we do is possible because we don't need a shot collar. We say it. The dog does it. This is huge. This eliminates the need for 90% of every training item that's being sold today. This saves a fortune of money. I was disabled for, well, almost 20 years now. I couldn't afford anything. I couldn't afford, this is what I afford, this is what I use for everything. A pinch chain, and you can use a choking chain, choker chain if you want, just not nowhere near as effective or near as safe. But I use a pinch chain, a long rope with a snap tied on it. I use a leash. That's it. A harness if I want a dog to pull something. Literally, with just those three things, I obtain full verbal control. I don't need any other training devices because I get that weight in my words to where what I say my dog does, whether he's behind a building or a mile in the woods. If we're coming out and I want my dog to stay, I say stay. And then I'll walk halfway to the truck and I say, sit down. He'll sit down, lay down. If he's in the center of the woods, this is all possible because his mind is fixated on 
me. His adrenaline is controlled. So if there's a noise in the word, woods, he doesn't care. He's in tune with me. Verbal control is absolutely amazing. And you don't even have to do any of that to get this stuff. That's just if you want to take things way farther like me and a lot of my guys. But one thing everybody, the whole world's going to learn is the power and pre-trained easy and drop. There are 2,400 people getting bit every day on average here in the United States. Every day. The first chapter in my book eliminates that. Period. I've been using it for this exact same reason for a personal injury at my house when I was 19 for 29 years now. For 29 years, I've never had any destructive chewing. I have never had issues like other people. Um, I didn't really realize that all us coon hunters are a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. We work with dogs that harvest things in adrenaline mode. So many things they do doesn't scare us as much. We're harder handed people, but we have more knowledge guys. We walk more miles behind dogs than anybody else I know. The, 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 the dedication that we have has taken our dogs to a different level. I just discovered it. And now we're gonna get some amazing results. We're gonna start getting some video up here and we're gonna start better in the lives of all these dogs. Um, coon hunting is amazingly more fun if we never have to worry about stay put and slick treeing. These things make coon hunting more fun to anybody starting doing it and more fun to anybody that's done it their whole lives. If we can change these things in a matter of minutes, we enjoy our time more. So have fun with it, guys. Know when you're getting ready to leave that tree, okay, that that dog's gonna be pulling you. You're gonna get a little upset, but don't care. Don't worry about it. It's only gonna be for 30 yards, and it's only gonna happen a few times until that dog's set in. And then literally, you'll see it happen. Literally, when the dog's ready, and he is mined at this season, you won't have to hook him up. At that 30 yard mark, you just say heal, and he'll start healing. And it's over. You've spent no more time to get the result. None. You've just put up with a little bit of, of oiliness for 20, 30 yards. That's it. The only thing we did do was not discipline at the right moment. That's it. Takes no more time. Absolutely will blow your mind with the difference in accuracy you get. Simply... We're allowing the dogs to understand exactly what we want by doing things when their mind is in the appropriate mode, adrenaline mode, to understand. That's it. All right, guys, send me some text. Um, Josh, you got to give me a call, buddy. I want to see some of those obedience videos. Josh has got some amazing red bones. Josh Williams. Um amazing self-taught trainer like myself. Um, there are so many hound owners out here that do this stuff and know the difference of what it gets in the woods. It's just unbelievable and it's unbelievably enjoyable. And now the key is it takes little to no time to get it. This spring we're going to be recording as much as I can get my need to do in the woods so that way you guys can see how I maximize my time and I get these results while I'm hunting anyways so that way it doesn't take any more time I just spend my time a little different that's all all right guys I'll be on here next week and we will see what you guys text me and what you guys want to learn and we will get on it do it to it till it's done guys I thank you very much tune in next Saturday at 1 and we will be going over another 101. Might do puppy starting 101 is what I was thinking. Because the weather's clearing up, everybody's at home. So I might let you guys into some secrets of how I start my pups. Now I start my pups. And guys, everything I say is real, okay? So I, I don't never josh when it comes to dogs. Dogs are too important to me, especially hound dogs. The one saved my life. Um. 
I have some amazing 101s for puppy starting that I use here with every dog. Matter of fact, every dog that comes here, I take a lot of the older ones, even if they're Grand Knight champions, back through these things because our domesticated dogs miss out on them. They're survival of the fittest scent techniques. They are techniques that keep wolves, fox, coyotes alive to this day, and none of our puppies go through them. Scent wiring, genetic sight chase, scent box that I was speaking about earlier for wind belief. Those three things are what I take my young dogs through as long as, as well as daily field trips. By the time you take your dogs through these things, my pups, generally, my a pup I trained, okay, if I get it and 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 that pup is outgoing and bonded to us in less than a month, I'll have that pup tree in his own coon by himself in the woods. And I'll obedience train on the way out. So generally in less than a month they'll be completely obedience trained as well. To where all the foundations in, you don't even need a leash. They understand everything, and it's amazingly better dog in the woods, and it's amazingly better dog to hunt. I believe the best pleasure dog in the world is a competition style hound that handles like a Cadillac. That is the most enjoyable. No leash needed. All points. When I say when I when I say find it, there better be feet hitting dirt and throwing it towards my eyes. I best need to look down, they best get. Um, all these want marrying techniques that I use on my pups gets that dimension. No dog wants a coon enough, not for me. I give my pups the one of three Grand Knight Champions, but then I observe a very crucial role. I see inactivity and not hunting them as training too, okay? If we, I like to start my young dogs training. I like them train their own coon at five, six months old. Okay, or at least split training. Then what I'm going to do is I'm never going to burn them up, because this is the mechanism burning pup up. If we hunt that young dog too much and he trees too many times while he's growing, his adrenaline gland develops to produce too much adrenaline. Then we get a slick training idiot. That's the cause. So we can start our dogs young. But then you just don't hunt them constantly. Hunt them a night or two a week and give them a week or two break. This allows their body to grow but have that level of want in it. So you get an amazingly better hound, an amazingly more experienced hound without any of the problems that they cause. But I think next week we'll be going over some of my 101s. Um, I use more patience when I'm starting. I never scare a pup of a coon or a, a scented cage ever at first. I wait, I use patience, I start them out of confidence so they want it. This mechanism gets them to start treating coon as soon as they smell it in the woods. Okay, And then I use a scent box for a fear strike for scent layering after the dogs are aggressive towards coon. These two things raise the want of any coon dog. The more a dog wants it, the harder and farther he will go to get it. And that is a fact. Want is tied to every individual dog's depth and drive. Most dogs that are slouchy hunting simply don't have that level of want because they've never experienced a fear factor. A fear factor that a wild predator experience allows them to hunt harder. So we can change slouchiness on all dogs. Literally, we can change every coon hound's ability that is alive today. Every single one is three times better than we think if we use the right communication and the right experience that they would get in the wild if they had to survive. Okay, guys, I'm going to sign off here. I'll talk forever. I love talking dogs. Um, the things I know have to be spread. They're just too easy to get, and they're too fun. And... It's a whole different level of safety. Um, we've got to stop these dog bites, guys. Um, the world doesn't know how to do it. Uh, I've been on a mission ever since I found that out. I didn't know that many people were getting bit every day. Um, where my book is used, this removes 
99.9% of any child bites because everything we're doing is over food. 90% of people that get bit isn't by the mean dog that's out in the yard. It's by the nice dog that's in the home that we trust. And then something or somebody falls or startles the dog around their food. 90% of all dog bites happen over food. The dogs that are biting are the safe dogs that we think are safe. This has happened to me. And now we're going to get it stopped for everybody. Now, when we blend this kind of training to hunting, it equates to adrenaline control because coon is food in the hound's mind. The tree is the bowl. So this training I do in the backyard in just three steps, pre-training, easy, drop get me a different level of accuracy. They get me a different level of track dog. They get me a different level of adrenaline control, which equates to thought when hunting. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to get off here and probably go mess with some dogs. I got a little red bone to obedience train. And we're going to have some fun and tree some coon. All right, guys. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Kelly. You guys have fun and tree some coon and everybody stay safe, okay? Tune in next week, guys. I am out of here. Talk to you later.